Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Rant Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm also Jeremy. <laughs> we were so close to getting that right. I knew my own name this time. Yeah, you did. I'm Rob, kind of... though. <laughs> uh, coming up on the show today, we're actually going to touch on uh, when the red light goes on, how easy it is to fumble um, doing a video on YouTube, um, just like last week when I thought I was you and you were me. <laughs> and we weren't on any special mushrooms. So it, just, it just happened. Just dead, tired, sober. Uh, so on today's show, uh, talking all things sherried scotch today. Um, yes, sir. We're going to talk about how kind of sherried whiskey has kind of taken a bit of a turn as production increases, the demand for whiskey increases, the quality potentially going down in some of our favorite whiskeys. We're going to touch on all things sherry um, with regards to that. Our value whiskey uh, tonight is the Abelur Abuna. Yeah, batch 59. Batch 59, cast strength, uh, sherry bomb. 60.9% ABV. Yeah, so this one um, we'll get into. I've actually reviewed this one before. I really do like it. Um, One of the better buys for us here in Ontario at $100 Canadian. About It's about 70-ish US. Yeah. Um, but in the U.S., it's actually a little bit more expensive. Yeah, we actually get a good deal in here. We get it at a good deal. Yeah. Um, our secondary market find tonight, we'll talk about some uh, Macallan stuff uh, that we found in the secondary market. Um, so let's get into it. Um, the yeah, Abelur Buna. Yes, sir. So definitely batch variant in my experience with these. Um, I've had some that were just okay. I think this one, Batch 59, is one that I do really like a lot. I actually reviewed, I don't know if it was this batch, but I reviewed this with guys that we're a fan of, um, whose name alludes me right now, <laughs> uh, South Florida Pete Lovers. Oh, the Pete Lovers, yeah. Great guys. Absolutely hilarious channel. Yeah, they're they're great. If you haven't uh, watched any South Florida uh, Pete Lovers, go check them out. Yeah, you gotta check them out. This one, I get lots of like... Christmas spice in it. There's like a really good like orange kind of citrus note along with all those yeah. heavy like prunes and dates and raisins. Um, I, I guess that's just it right there. Um, the orange flavors that come from many of the sherry cask whiskeys bring that like Christmas experience mm-hmm. to the forefront, right? Like, I don't know. A lot of Italians get the clementines, the box of clementines from the grocery store during those... <laughs> It's not just Italians. It's not just Italians. <laughs> Everyone loves their Clementines in, I'm the, sure, in I'm the holiday sure. season. For I'm sure. sure. <laughs> but whatever, I'm Italian, so I figure whenever I can throw in a shameless Italian play. Whenever you want to claim something for your own, you can just say, like, this is an Italian thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, this is a great batch. Um, so like we said, $100 Canadian here at the LCBO. I think the prices on these in the UK bumped up like pretty substantially. Um not too recently. Yeah. Even um, in the places that we normally get whiskey for cheaper, you're spending more on this one than on uh, than we are in Ontario, right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. But this is this can go into our like typical LCBO rant because <laughs> we were kind of joking about this off camera, how, you know, the... They don't realize that Abelur is his actual like sought after Scotch, so they think like yeah whatever nobody's gonna buy it anyway just leave it at a hundred bucks. <laughs> I wonder how sales do on the Abelur Abuna because I was looking at the inventory. There's lots of stock currently right now. I'm not yeah. sure what batch they currently have, um, but there's lots available in Ontario if you want to go out and buy this. I would love to know what it costs them to get that because like why is everybody else charging so much? Are they doing it because of inflation? Or are they getting it at a higher price than they used to get it at? Is the LCBO getting it at the same price as they used to get it at? Or are they getting it at a more expensive price and just not realizing that they should bump up the price? I don't know. Let's, let's Too not many try questions. To, not try to break the system that's already broken. <laughs> if, they, get just, they just throw Maggie, Maggie the monkey 
into they uh, just spin a big wheel of numbers it. and like yeah. it just keeps landing on a hundred bucks for whatever so reason getting it keeps it there. landing there yeah <laughs> Um, well, we should get into the rant topic, which is how sherried whiskeys are declining somewhat in some whiskeys, and um, it doesn't seem to happen in this Ab- Abelure batch, but Macallan is definitely an example of sherry kind of dipping a little bit, in our opinion, anyway. Yeah, I, I think actually people would argue that, though, because I know that there's a lot of, like, abana lovers that mm. say like the earlier batches were unbelievable yeah so i mean i haven't tried too many of the earlier batches so i can't speak to that yeah but i definitely have noticed it with mccallan yeah yeah i think abelure the consensus is batches you know the early ones like one to 15 are amazing mm-hmm. um and then hits and misses all the way through the lineup um when going up in batches It'd be a cool Google search. Maybe we'll do it later on to see what those are going for on secondary. Yeah. The batches one, two, three, whatever. But we have two great examples right here of what used to be with McAllen in the cast strength. This is not it. That's the classic cut. The cast strength um, and visible difference in color. Yeah, so what we got in front of us right now, the old discontinued Macallan cast strength. So these were out um, early 2000s, I believe, and when they kind of got discontinued. Um, One key difference with the old discontinued cast strength with the newer um, classic cut, this is the classic cut we're drinking tonight, it's a 2017 release. Um, It says right on the front label, matured exclusively in sherry cask from Spain. The classic cut distinctively says matured in sherry season casks that's from right. spain so not saying that these weren't season casks but they're deliberately now saying that they are seasoned well do you know what the date was where they were no longer allowed to use that like praxit or the praxirad or praxirad, no, yeah it's, it's pronounced a couple different ways yeah um I believe that it got banned in it somewhere in the 1980s. 1980s. Yeah. So this was bottled when? This was definitely bottled. Uh, there's no date on the bottling. No date. But it would be after the, the Pax Red ban. So there wouldn't be any Pax Red in that one. Okay. Because uh, assuming this is probably not the oldest stuff either, right? It's a noise statement. Yeah. So McAllen Cash Strength, they had a couple different releases. The really old um, pure red label. They had a 10-year-old, age which statement. was out for a while, yeah. and then um, they dropped the age statement of that, and these were like the more recent ones before it was discontinued. Right. But yeah, that Paxerat would be like, I think McAllen's, uh, some of those like old 18-year-olds that are like uh, 83 distillates, 82 distillates, 80 distillates, um, could definitely have like some of that Paxerat sherry in it. Yeah. Um, well, we looked it up, and... The biggest difference between McCallans of old and McCallans of new is that they used to use those transport casks from big Solera. So mm-hmm. for those of you that don't know, a Solera of any sort, uh, mainly used with sherry wine, which is a fortified wine, um, is a system where they pour in distillate from many, many years. Right? Or, well, in this case, it wouldn't be distillate, it would be wine, right? So they're pouring in, there's wine that could be up to 100 years old in, in the Solera cask, and there could be as young as, let's say, two, three years old. But it's in the Solera cask, and most of it's so old that when they transfer it to these transport ca- uh, casks to be bottled eventually, uh, these casks were used earlier to age uh, whiskey. Right. right. So yeah, so the Slayer system, there's essentially they're taking out sherry and then replacing it with new sherry. And that constant uh, movement in the cask, you know, when you're taking it out, you're getting sherry from all the years in the That's cask. Right. But basically, the best term to be used is the transport cask contained wine that was ready to drink, mm-hmm. whereas the new seasoned sherry casks, which still hold wine for two to five years... But not quite ready to be uh, consumed, basically. Right. Yes. So it's 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 usually 
passed over to a brandy company that will turn that sherry into uh, a brandy, a distillate, right? Or uh, I've even heard uh, vinegars. They use it for vinegars and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so you're mainly just looking at a difference in quality, right? Like right. There's, there's a huge quality difference in sherry that they were transporting for bottling and versus just for using as seasoning and it's whiskey casks. Ultimately, because people aren't drinking as much sherry wine as they used to drink, right? So they had to rectify... <laughs> there's, there's a word that we can, talk to, we can talk about later on. Here we go on the rant about not being able to talk in the right lights. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll throw up a graph uh, on the screen right now. The decline in sherry sales. So essentially from the 1980s to current, huge decline in demand for sherry. Right, and that's a huge issue with maturing whiskey. Right, back in Absolutely. the 1980s, lots of great casts would be available um, to the Scotch whiskey market. Now, with the decline, they're just not selling as much. There's not as many casts out there, and I think Macallan has had to invest in sherry production companies just to keep their you know sherry casts um, available. Absolutely, and in demand. I mean, the reason why we wanted to talk about this topic tonight was because we've had some pretty bad experiences with some whiskeys of late. Yes. And <clears throat> there's a note that I think you refer to it as like a sour oak note or a sour wood note. Uh, I usually refer to it as an ammonia note. Mm -hmm. um, it's mainly present in sherry cask whiskey of the last produced in the last 10 years or wine whiskeys like wine cask whiskeys right mm -hmm. so i think the common denominator is that they're using younger wines and younger sherries to uh season these barrels and then those barrels are being used for whiskey later on <clears throat> and with the with the Macallan classic cuts and all the new Macallans, I get a pencil shavings kind of note. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'd be curious to see if I got that in the uh, in the old cast strength because it I've never said it is it's an off putting note, but I do notice it very um, it's very obvious for me in in the classic cut and the newer Macallans like the edition series and stuff like that. Yeah, so I just sipped the old Macallan cast strength and then the newer classic cut. One thing you notice right away is just how much richer and bolder the older cast strength was. Now, ABV-wise, these are almost the same. Yeah. The old Macallan cast strength, 58.2. And this is the 2017 classic 2017 cut. 2017 classic cut, 58.4. 58.4. So pretty much the exact same ABV. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a huge color difference. You can notice the color right away. Uh, Macallan does not color their whiskeys, so looking at it is relevant. Um, definitely darker with the old um, cast strength. Now, that could be an age thing. I mean, I don't think that these would be too far off in age. Perhaps they are. Um, McCallan used to have a 10-year-old cast strength. That got discontinued. So you'd have to easily assume that it's younger than 10 years old. Um, I don't think McCallan bottles stuff that's younger than 6, I heard somewhere. Yeah, I, um, I heard 7. They don't from, go younger than 7? From uh, someone that actually works at the distillery that has like no vested interest in in the uh, you know a marketing side of things and McAllen right. did have a seven-year-old age statement for a very specific market I remember seeing that at some point in time so they have bottled stuff with a seven-year age statement before so yeah maybe it's uh, the youngest would be seven I'm curious to know if the classic cuts are exclusively European oak or if they're just like it, it says it has Spain on it but do we know that that's a European cask or a European wood Mm -hmm. Or is that American wood brought to Jerez where they produce the barrel, season it, uh, you know, char it, season it, whatever. Right, right? and that's a, a great premise to the next thing we should talk about, about the sherry cast is the wood. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of movement has gone to American oak, um, you know, definitely ex-bourbon barrels uh, more available and less expensive mm -hmm. than a sherry cast from Spain. A lot of whiskey, uh, Scotch whiskey companies are using American oak, sherry seasoned American oak. Yep. Now, one thing that I was looking at um, right on McCallan's website, saying that European wood 
has five times more tannins versus American wood. Um, those provide the you know astringency associated with with wines, Absolutely, um, yeah. spirits like that. So you're getting you know more of that that tannic um, notes with that's, European oak. Yeah, and that's clearly noticed between these two. I think so. Right, um, you're getting a much more um, age like feeling whiskey out of the like older feeling whiskey out of the uh, cast strength and it might not be they might be actually the same age right but this one just tastes older and it like and that's definitely because the wine used inside the casks then was older Mm -hmm. than the the wine used inside the classic cut casks Um, I am noticing now that I've revisited the classic cut 2017 I do think that 2019 is the best so far in my opinion Mm -hmm. of the classic cuts uh, but I'm noticing a little bit of a sour oak note, as you would refer to it, in the classic cut a little bit. One thing that I want to mention about Macallan uh, specifically is the importers of these whiskeys. Now, if you take a look at the back of the newer classic cut imported by Edgerton Americas, New York City, that change happened in 2014. Mm-hmm. It used to be this company here. Um, Remy Amerique, or however you pronounce that. Um, so one thing that I saw Liquor Hound talk about, if you haven't subscribed to Liquor Hound, great channel on YouTube, um, check him out. He did um, a Sherry Whiskey 101 video, and he mentioned how the change in importers, Edgerton uh, Americas, definitely a noticeable difference in the color of the Macallan 12 and the Macallan 18 at that time. So right. 2014, you're looking at those Macallan 18s that were 95 distillate and earlier, yeah. and you can tell um, there's a huge secondary market drop off from a 1996, 1997 distillate, 18 year old to a 1995, 1994, 1983. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Amérique, I think, that's Amérique. French. Yeah. Remy oh, Amérique, yeah. Yeah, so it's probably the cognac, uh, company Remy right okay. that there used to um, interesting how there's such a dra- and like drastic color difference once Edrington, Edrington took mm-hmm. over yeah I'm not sure if this is going to show up on camera um, here but uh, I'm pretty sure I, I did a video comparing these two and I'll, uh, I'll throw it up here or link to it as well you can tell um, definitely much darker the old uh, discontinued cast strength so you hear now part of what got me into scotch was a really nice sherried whiskey yeah i think mm-hmm. we were in agreement for a long time about that right early on we both really liked mccallan i think that's why we're using them tonight because we are, we're both pretty big fans of mccallan mm-hmm. and we all like we have been for many years what has been your most disappointing i think we might have the same one but most disappointing sherry cask whiskey that you expected huge things from and just got that like off-putting not so good uh note out of well i think the deanston 20 like comes to mind like yeah deanston 20 for sure that's probably my number one really disappointed with that you call it the ammonia like the sour oak note yeah. that i get in that um yeah you know huge fans of deanston but yeah that 20 year old just completely uh it lost it for me i wonder if this is kind of like a matrix thing like where you know which i always forget which color the pill was is it you take the blue pill you go back to sleep and you never like remember that this happened you take the red pill and you see how far the rabbit hole goes i think so i feel like the red pill is finding that ammonia note in sherry cask whiskey and then (laughs) once you find that rat like that note you cannot unrecognize that note. Like mm-hmm. I find it in the new um, Four Square uh, Empery. It's a sherry, a sherry seasoned or uh, sherry finished rum. I find it in that. I find it in uh, the the new Cavalon French wine uh, cask. Mm-hmm. I find it in a bunch of things. So yeah, I mean a lot of people. Um you know, pick up that sulfur note too. Mm-hmm. A lot of sherry whiskeys, um, sometimes the sulfur note can be pleasant if it's not too dialed up. 
yeah. and a lot of people are a lot more receptive to that even too right like for me sulfur notes in my experience what i've had don't necessarily ruin a whiskey for me right. a lot of people they would a lot of people you know get a really sulfured sherry cast and just can't stand it mm-hmm. um yeah so i actually don't mind sulfur i, f- I feel like mm-hmm. there's a distinct difference like uh, the ammonia note that I'm referring to, it literally, like, think um, ammonia. Like, what contains ammonia? Like, it's almost like uh, you, you walk into a public bathroom, that kind of smell. Like, uh, that's sure, kind of, yeah, like right? Cleaning solution. Yeah, like, it's just, uh, like, bleach, jab like, like, like hospital smell. Yeah, yeah, like, just gross. And, and, like, I get that in some, like, some things that I'm tasting. It. The one that really hits home for me was, uh, I did a review with, swami a long time ago the glenn farkless 15 and i took a sip and i'm like honestly thank god i cracked this bottle because otherwise i would have literally thought somebody pissed in that bottle <laughs> <'Cause that's> how, <laughs> like it literally has that kind of note and it's it's gross it, yeah it is gross yeah so i mean what can we really say about the Klein and Sherry cast. There's nothing we can really do about it. No. I mean, demand is up, so you know, quality is going down. These distillers are looking at other ways to get out of Sherry cast, and a lot of them are moving to ex bourbon, which is yeah. fine. There's lots of good ex bourbon casts out there. I mean, I think the wine cask venture is a good is a good one. There's a lot of really good examples of different types of wine casks that work really, really well mm-hmm. with uh, whiskey. And Longro does a great job of this, right? Their whole Red Series, for the most part, there's like one or two misses out of, what, six or seven? Yeah. Uh, I mean, and they're, uh, we, we call them misses when comparing to the rest of the Longro mm-hmm. Reds, but they're not bad by any means. Mm-hmm. Cap Franc seems to work really, really well with whiskey. Um, there's a few that I've really enjoyed. There's a whole bunch that Brook Laddie's doing all those uh, experimental series whiskeys. Yeah. And I believe there's been a law passed now that you can use like tequila casks, you can use brandy casks, you can yeah. use like uh, peach brandy, like different types of brandy. Which We've is, seen like the rum casks kind of like influence that have come out yeah. in like the last couple of years, a lot more rum casks being involved with uh, scotch as well. Yeah, I think, I think it's important to explore those venues because otherwise uh, you can invest a lot of money and spend a lot of time uh, with this whiskey in cask and it turns out terrible mm-hmm. because just the cask used originally was going to throw it off from the beginning yeah i mean i like this Macallan classic cut i think it's pretty good whiskey absolutely um but you you go back to try it like what it used to be with these old cast strings and you're just like well it's not the same at all all right so i think the best advice i could give someone approaching just getting into the whiskey journey, all right? Uh, we all started somewhere. I started with Canadian whiskey. Do you remember what you started with? Bourbon. Bourbon. If you're gonna start with scotch and you're gonna dip into the sherry whiskey scotch, sherry aged, sherry matured, then unless you have a ton of money to buy like secondary market old school stuff, just don't even taste that stuff <laughs> because if you do you're gonna be in a lot of trouble like it kind of absolutely skews your entire perception of what a sherry whiskey should be and you hear all these older um gentlemen that like grew up on the old mccallans the yeah. old avalors the old uh spring banks that's a big one these guys are just like you guys are drinking trash. Like, yeah, and you're paying a shit ton of money for it, too. Right? And then they're the ones that get so bent out of shape about the prices of whiskey because they were drinking whiskey at its finest with materials and, like, like resources that were at its, like, their pinnacle, yeah. you know? And they, they're just... Whiskey's not the same anymore. It's not... Maybe, like, the, you know, there's... A lot that can be said about the evolution of like the process and stuff like that. Maybe that's changed, and maybe mm-hmm. it is getting better, and maybe they're better at finding the the the, the proper cuts and and so on and so forth. But you can't change the fact that you're not getting the same type of like thousand year old oaks, mm-hmm. and and you can't change the fact that you're getting um, really really old sherry wine 
that ages your oak barrels, you know? Yeah. You can't change these facts, and that's never going to be something that comes back. So you either have to be really innovative and use, like we were saying earlier, the rum casks, the maybe the tequila casks, maybe like something different. And or that's, Yeah, that's one good thing about, I guess, whiskey nowadays is the variety, right? Like the variety of scotch now is so vast. And yeah, sure, you're not getting those like old style sherry casks anymore. Um, but, you know, still so, so some decent sherry whiskeys here and there. And the variety, like, like you can get so much different variations. And For sure. the selection that you have now is way more than before. So I get it. Like those old guys who used to buy... McAllen 18 for $70 on the shelf in, in 1990. Um, yeah. Then when it was freaking amazing stuff, now we're like, what is this garbage that they're <laughs> serving me for $200, $300, $400 a bottle? Yeah. It's, uh, I get it. I yeah. could totally understand where they're coming from. Like, it, it would suck. Like, it, I'm trying to think of a comparable, like, for us. Like, when we get to that, like, when we get to our 60s, right? <laughs> so, about, you know, 25 years from now, <laughs> what, what, what are we going to be like ranting and raving about and like shaking our cane at? <laughs> That's true. I mean, I don't know. Like whiskey can really get much more expensive than it is now. It seems like we're at the top. I mean, a comparable would be like when I was a kid, I don't know, like what? We used to get one cent candies at the store. Now they're just, now they're five cents. <laughs> Back in my day, I used to pay a penny for those. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I guess so. I mean, I can't really think of too much. Like you look at the quality of goods maybe like are they going to change that much i don't think they will like, I, I don't i think we've already entered a zone where there's 8 billion people on this planet like we're, we're the resources are di- diminishing by the day <laughs> like we're not really going to be uh, who are we talking there's not going to be a world in the world 25 years from now it's going to be a desert 50% of us are going to die from covid <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what that was We're getting wiped out. Let's just enjoy the whiskey uh, yeah. as it comes along. Yeah. Spend your money on <laughs> old whiskey. <laughs> you know what? There's too many... Like, I'm finding it too often now where there's a whiskey that... I'm almost hesitant to buy sherry whiskey right now. And like it's weird. I'd never thought I'd be at this stage in my whiskey journey, but I'm hesitant because as soon as I get a little bit of that note, I'm like... That's it. It's done for me. Like, it, it, like I said, you take that red, red pill and that's it. It's over. Like, I hope you never. I hope everybody listening to this never finds that red pill, <laughs> because when you do, like, you cannot unsee it. You cannot untaste or smell that note. And I bet you it was in many whiskeys I had before that. But because I don't know, I just noticed it one day, and that was it. I took the red pill, and the rest is history. Well, it goes like, you know, taking a chance on, like, let's say McAllen, for example, a great example, the 12 year old coming back to the Ontario market, right. uh, 43%. Now the price is $150. 150 bucks. I mean, this was a whiskey I could buy in the States and bought it all the time for $60 US. Yeah. Now it's about $70 US, which yeah. is conversion. You're looking at $100 Canadian. It's yeah. 150 in our area now. 150 here. Do you really want to buy that whiskey knowing that McAllen has most likely added a larger proportion of second fill cast because the color has been gotten lighter and lighter and lighter. Yeah, and and what what I'm trying to figure out as well is like even in the places where we spend less money on whiskey, it's still pretty expensive. Like in Alberta, this is still going for close to 150 bucks. Yeah. So it's not like it's this is not just an LCBO problem. This is a, like. Maybe a McAllen problem. I mean, I remember just like not even like a year and a half ago when I did my top five scotches for beginners recommending McAllen 12 Sherry Cask yeah. to all the U.S. Uh, audience because like you can find it for 60 bucks, 65 you know, at Costco, sometimes you can get it for forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. you know, like it's a great value at 43% at that one. Now in the UK, you get it at 40%. It's a little bit uh, more expensive even at that, but now, I don't know. I fell in love with that whiskey when I, I went to Arizona about three and a half years ago. Went to Arizona with the wife and my son, who was just over or under a year at the time. No, just over a year at the time. And <clears throat> I bought probably about six minis of the McAllen 12-year-old. 
because it was such a great deal. It was like, I want to say three ninety nine American right. for those minis. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I can spend three ninety nine for basically two ounces each uh, on these six, so each one. Um, or I can go back to the hotel and spend at least 15 bucks a dram at the bar right or 20 yeah. or whatever it is so i was like yeah this is a no-brainer i'm just gonna buy a bunch of these and and that'll hopefully last me for the week mm-hmm. and i did that and i fell in love with it because i was having it pretty much every night yeah i didn't have a lot of it i was like you know two ounces a night or whatever for a six night straight you're on vacation so whatever i'm sure i had more than that <laughs> those are those are low numbers you gotta, yeah. get, you gotta get those numbers <laughs> i'm sure i was i'm sure i had more than that <laughs> Probably a few daiquiris or pina coladas by the pool. <laughs> but I fell in love with it. I thought mm-hmm. it was fantastic. And it was the older stock stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Flash forward to now, and this one's 150 bucks. Yeah, it's 43%. That, and the LCBO charges more for every 1% that it goes up in ABV, which is absolutely absurd. This is probably like a semi-LCBO rant slash like what number two are <laughs> third week in a row the yeah. LCBO yeah, sure. um, so LCBO just charges astronomical prices the higher the ABV the more they they charge usually except for you know there's the yeah there's the, 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 the exceptions the like the exception. Abuna which is 60% ABV and very inexpensive so yeah. like again just the big wheel of numbers right. just spin yeah. around what do, you, what do you get on Maggie the monkey <laughs> trying to figure out <laughs> but okay so my point in all this is you have, and this is not just a trash McCallum because there's a lot of this happening throughout the brands and whatever, but it's so noticeably obvious with McCallum because right now you have on the same shelf, literally side by side, McCallum double cask, 12 year old at 99.99. McCallum triple cask, 12 year old, 99.99. And then McCallum single or sherry oak, so it's single cask. It's not, not a single cask. No, it's not a single, single cask. Single cask, maturated. Single, uh, it's just European o- sure. oak sherry as opposed to the double cask, which is European and American sherry, and the triple cask, which is bourbon, then American and European sherry. Seasoned right? sherry, yeah. Yeah, seasoned. So all three of them are, are seasoned sherry. Right. Right. Um, which maybe if McCallan came out and said, hey, our new <laughs> McCallan sherry cask uh, sherry oak 12 year old is exclusively aged in uh, you know the Solera style <laughs> yeah sure then right. hey I'm paying that extra 50 bucks that makes sense to me but why am I paying $50 more for the same age same brand <laughs> I know it's Dude. like I don't McAllen is just like it seems like they've just added more money to their brand name and like I feel bad for reps in Ontario. I do too. Like, because I, like it's so hard to sell your product. Like we got a nice sherry whiskey here, it's twenty three percent. Oh yeah, how much a hundred and fifty dollars? It's like ugh. It's so hard because like there's so much whiskey out there right. for a hundred and fifty dollar range that's you know, you can get a whiskey that's twenty one years old, no problem for that much money. So I, I think what we need to do here on a whiskey rant live or whatever, not live, but you know what I mean, on a whiskey rant, is you line up four or five tw- uh, 12-year-old sherry whiskeys that you can find at the LCBO, mm-hmm. and I'll do the same. And obviously, uh, McAllen has to be one of them. And we just bang it out. We bang yeah. it out and see what, what wins. Because yeah. if the McAllen comes up on top, like comes up on top and like, you know, it beats out the other four that are less in price, then rightfully so. Maybe it should be that price. But yeah. my suspicion is it's not gonna come up on top. No. You know what I mean? I think I think if we did a head to head, I haven't tasted Glendronic twelve in a probably about a year, maybe a little bit less. But I have a funny feeling that might win. Or, you know, maybe even the Highland Park twelve year old. Right. Maybe we make the rule that there's no peated twelve year olds allowed, right? Sure. I guess just to make it fair. But I think that's something we might, we might want to test out. Yeah, we'll test it out, and we'll test out you know the new McAllen uh, sherry cask yeah. versus the old ones. I got it on. The, it's on the way. It was supposed to be here today. I could have actually picked it up at the LCBO, which wasn't much more, to be honest with you. We'll do that. All right. So moving on to our secondary market finds. I found an independent bottling of McAllen, 100% ex bourbon cast. This one is 19 years old. It's bottled by um, a, a bottling company called First Editions. 
Uh, only 271 bottles, cast strength, 52.8% ABV. Um, the person was asking 600 US dollars for it, not sure if it's sold or not. My opinion, Macallan Distillate doesn't necessarily work well with ex-bourbon cast maturation, but I love to try something like that that's just pure ex-bourbon cast Macallan. Yeah, I, I had an experience with the one that Jasper had. I forget what it was called exactly. Similar, but it was it was actually older. 100% ex-bourbon. I think it was like 23 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I wasn't a fan. Yeah. <laughs> I was not a fan. And yeah. I don't know if, like, you know, these independent bottling companies, they put it in their own cast. They do. Or, yeah. So then... That, Most likely, I would say. Let's blame it on that then. <laughs> but I, I was not a fan. And I was thinking it was going to be, like, epic stuff mm-hmm. because, you know... Uh, I haven't had a chance to try too many older McAllen bottlings. Yeah. And that was 23, I think. If not, it was older, actually. But I can't yeah. remember exactly. I think a lot of times independent bottling companies will buy the distillate or they can definitely buy a cast that the distillery might think is a little off brand, right? So you're buying something that doesn't necessarily fit with their house style right. and they're not going to use it in a vatting, so they'll sell it off. So it could be that as well. It could be, it could be a McAllen barrel. You know what? Um, Highland Park does a really good job of selling stuff that they don't think is for them, but really, really good. Like mm-hmm. you had a couple of whiskey agency ones that were awesome. Like yeah, Toronto, Toronto Whiskey Society did a, a joint uh, bottling with them, and yeah, their Orkney one. They just call it Orkney because they don't yeah. want to put Highland Park on it, but it is Highland yeah. Park. Yeah. And yeah, it turned out it was really good. A lot of times you get something with Highland Park a little more peated, maybe a little mm-hmm. heavier peated than what they would use in a vatting. So. Kind of cool. Which is cool, yeah. Um, did you know that McAllen Cast Strength used to do a Fino Sherry Butt? I did, honestly, I did not know that. I don't, honestly, I thought they were like exclusively Oloroso Sherry and ex bourbon, but yeah. So um, this one was distilled in eighty one, bottled in uh, ninety nine. Fino Sherry, fifty fifty six percent ABV. Um, as Scotch whiskey auctions in the UK went for four thousand British pounds. Wow, I, I mean that's probably just for like the uniqueness of that bottling because like how good. McAllen prices are pretty much all collectability, right? Yeah. Like they're very inflated uh, with that regard. Yeah. Um, so this one was a distillery only exclusive. So I haven't had too many Fino aged whiskeys that I was a huge fan of. Not gonna lie. Yeah, there was a really good um, oh, one by bottled by Malt Man. It was uh, very distillery. Anyway, good Fino. You know who makes a good Fino cask is um, Cavalin. Their Fino I is good. I think I've maybe tried a sample of the Fino, but I think that's one of the few that have eluded me over the years is the Fino. Mm-hmm. Uh, never reviewed it. I think it's like one of the more drier, driest right. sherry, yeah. right? Yeah, it's the driest sherry. Mm-hmm. That one, and I think. If I'm not mistaken, uh, because it has this yeast film that um, Fleur did something anyway. Um, there's one other one. I think it's the um, Amontillado, but I could be wrong. Uh, or the Manzanilla. One of, one of those two have the yeast as well. And that causes that, that share to be a lot more dry. Mm-hmm. But dry meaning less sweet. Right, so that's technically the term used when a wine is less sweet. In my, yeah. I think I'm not, I'm not uh, Eric whiskey, uh, Eric <laughs> weight uh, wine reviews, but <laughs> well, I, I think, think like the sugar content in the grapes is maybe less, so that's why it's not as sweet, right? And more drying, maybe. Um, we're talking about Macallan cast strength. Going back um, to these old Macallan cast strengths, you're looking at the pure red label, which was an NAS. They command the most money in the secondary market. Um, I'm seeing one here for 2,100 British pounds. If you go to the age stated uh, 10 year old, you're looking at um, uh, 850 British pounds. Wow. And then the one that we're drinking here, about 600 British pounds. Man, I would love to get my hands on one of those. I think it would probably blow my mind, but. Not worth the price, right? Because you're. <laughs> The problem with with McAllen buying it on the secondary market, uh, secondary market or auction houses, is that there's so much inflated value for sure. collectability of that to open it, it's like, well, 
it's not it's, the whiskey's not going to drink like it's 600 pounds that's right? right like these used to sell uh like 100 bucks yeah um you know you know what i think you're when you're talking sherry casks i think your best bet is to stick with the brands that know a thing or two thing or two about sherry casks and like even if you're going independent try to stick with like a gordon mcphail or something like that because i found even in independent bottlings that note the dreaded note of that can only be associated with you know uh maybe a bad sherry cask or or whatever Mm. but that dreaded note is in a lot of independent bottlings that I've noticed as of recent. Uh, one being the uh, first editions, I think, Blair Athol. It was a 23-year-old. Great price. You open that bottle and you understand why. Because okay. it's got that ammonia punch in the face. Mm-hmm. And not in a good way. Right? Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know. But, anyway... I digress. Let's get back to the secondary market finds. You have a cool image over here of an uh, Mac- uh, old Macallan 12-year-old. Yeah. So, you want to talk a little bit about this one? or? Yeah, so these Macallans um, bottled late 90s, early 2000s. Um, definitely command a large money on the secondary market at uh, 600 pounds for these ones um so these they, they look drastically different than the the newer ones right like they have like that fancy like handwriting the more like scriptic thing. yeah yeah a picture of the famous um McAllen East, Estate. Easter Isles or yeah. Elchies or however that's pronounced. <laughs> um, We're getting a comment for that. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. That's that'll fit into the next category for sure. Yeah. What we talk about. Um, but so funny story with this exact bottle. Are you gonna? Can we show this? Uh, what it looks like? Yeah. A friend of mine works at the LCBO, and somebody returned this McAllen twelve-year-old. Oh wow. So he returned it to the LCBO, and the LCBO takes back everything. As long as it's sealed and never been tampered with, you can return it. So this guy returns it and maybe paid 50 bucks Mm -hmm. in the late 80s, early 90s for this bottle. So returns it. My buddy finds it, grabs it, brings it to the front, and says, I want to buy it. And they're like, well, we don't really have a skew for this. And he's like, well, you took it back, so... Um, he found it on the back like on the shelf Mm because someone had had taken this return and basically long story short someone that returned it created a stink got his money got a hundred bucks whatever the the double cask was going for at the time so he got the the double cask money so a hundred bucks so he made maybe 50 bucks on that return (laughs) to put towards uh, like a new bottle (laughs) My buddy bought it instantly for the same price. Sure. So whatever the return was, he's like, I'll pay whatever the return was. I just want this bottle. Yeah. And over here it says that this is the winning bid on this auction was 600 pounds. And I don't think it's the exact same bottling. So I, you know. Yeah, um, this one had like the tin, like that's the tin um, holder for it. So maybe kind of a little bit more, but yeah. But yeah, those old those old twelves go for a lot of money. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm. If I recall correctly, it was a cardboard box, the one that he mm-hmm. had. Yeah. And it was 40%, not 43%. Okay. But still, like, we're talking, he probably instantly made three, 400 bucks. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Another knock on the LCBO right That's there. insane that, one, someone would return that bottle, and two, that the LCBO would take it back without being able to scan it. Because that's one of the prerequisites for the LCBO. LCBO is great because they'll take back anything... Editing. Yeah. For exchange, not That's necessarily right. like refund, but for exchange, yep. as long as it's in resellable condition right. and it's still in their inventory, so they can scan it and it will pop up. Anyway, that's crazy. I think we should put have some sort of like bell or like you know a chime every time we say something bad about the LCBO. <laughs> <laughs> a, a rolling counter. Yeah, <laughs> rolling counter slash like. Uh, 
<laughs> douchebag jar. <laughs> like money yeah. in the douche. <laughs> in like we're assholes. Okay. I well, get we it. have complimented them, so we could take a dollar right. We could take a dollar okay, back. Okay. Yeah. When we compliment them, we could take a dollar back. But <laughs> something like that, like one or the other, or both. <laughs> I think that would be great. Um, going back to this classic cut real quick. Mm-hmm. I am getting a little bit of that note. It's very like mild it's almost if you're new to whiskey you probably wouldn't even compute that it's there but it's there mm-hmm. i find it like it, it is there um so maybe the answer to the mystery is just season casks maybe it's a season cask phenomenon where like sometimes the the wine used in these season casks is so young that maybe it kind of like you know, it's not done fermenting or, or whatever yeah. and just leaves a sour taste in that cask mm-hmm. then without, you know, really tasting the wine that was in there first, they throw it over to the, you know, the, the whiskey company that purchased it. Whiskey company pours their whiskey inside and ages it for X amount of years and there you go. You got a bad yeah, whiskey. I mean, right? definitely quality of the sherry quality of the wood I mean that all probably plays a factor in that I think that the Abelou Arbuna is actually a good comparison to this classic cut yeah I think they actually have a lot of similar notes they do like yeah. that orange note almost yep. carries over to both of them and they're they're from pretty close parts of uh, Highland Speyside no? they're both Speysiders I'm not sure exactly so where the distillery is located they're but both they both say Highland on the bottle and we know that Speyside is like nestled within the Highland region, mm-hmm. and it's considered its own region. McAllen always like tries to say that they're a Speyside, right? But they're technically they fall outside of the area. Of, <laughs> um, but they both say Highland, so let's just say that they're Highland, and they are very similar in taste. Mm-hmm. These two, anyway. Yeah. So I wonder, it would have been a cool comparison if we had an old version of the abuna to do against the cash that, that would be good yeah that would have been cool but uh abuna price 100 bucks at the lcbo mccallum cash strength what one 160 now. it was 150 50. for a long time now it's 160 yeah i think for um for the price i would still go with with the abuna with yeah. this batch specific this specific batch compared to this specific classic cut because yeah. i really really do like the 2019 classic cut a lot mm-hmm. so i mean that might be the exception but so last topic of the night is the philosophical breakdown of youtubers breaking down on camera <laughs> <laughs> great example of this podcast when i didn't know my name <laughs> when jeremy thought he was Rob, i thought i was you you were me <laughs> yeah so when the red light goes on uh your brain just melts and you can't say or talk about anything correctly it's it's honestly it's a real phenomenon like Mm -hmm. it's something that i really struggled with early on i'm a teacher by trade i talk for a living like that's what i do yeah as soon as that camera goes on something changes i know right something changes (laughs) like early on if you watch my first year of videos i apologize because they're honestly not that i'm saying that these new ones are much better (laughs) but my old ones were a train wreck and especially like the first like 20 i mean i i knew things about whiskey but when you heard me talk it didn't seem like it there was things that i would say and i can't like recall exact moments but there was things that i would say that were like i would as soon as I was watching the video, and like I didn't know how to edit or do anything back then, which is pathetic on my part, but whatever, <laughs> is what it is. I was going for the Ralphie approach early on, just mm-hmm. nowhere near arti- as articulate as Ralphie is. So it wasn't a very good just structure. A one take, no edit, just That's bang it, it out. Yeah. yeah, which was a horrible choice for me because <laughs> I don't have the Ralphie chops when it comes to like just speaking for. 20 minutes straight without using one filler word. Like, yeah. That guy's just unreal. He is really good at presenting. He's such a good presenter. Yeah. But me, learning the hard way, was not, I was not a good presenter at first especially. And I used to make mistakes constantly. Things that, like I would say, I'm looking at a bottle and I'd be like, 
This is the McAllen 17 year old, and it says classic cut right on the bottom. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Just like stupid things like that. Like, well, I literally had to delete a video, an entire video. My first ever review, I deleted because it was no word of a lie, a train wreck. Like, you cover your eyes, don't watch the gore because that's how bad it was. <laughs> well, we've all said like incorrect information, and it's with whiskey, it's like there's lots of information about it, like any bottle, right? And yeah. when you're trying to spew it out on camera, sometimes it just gets completely skewed. I mean, I have a great example of my, I think it was 2018 or 2019 Whiskey of the Year when I said the uh, Deanston Red Wine Bordeaux was a great sherry bomb. <laughs> Guess what? There's no sherry whiskey in that in that bottle. <laughs> it's a Bordeaux cast. And I kept going on about how it was like a sherry bomb and like it's great sherried whiskey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's red wine. I remember driving in my car listening to that video. I'm like, no. And like yeah, and like I don't I don't just say it once. I like double down and like keep saying it over and over and over again. It's funny how that happens. It's just you, you get very confident in that mistake. Um, I didn't get beat up too bad in the comment section, and that's another thing that happens a lot too. Is someone will just be like, "You idiot! It doesn't have anything to do with that." Blah 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 blah. Um, I've been pretty fortunate. People watching my channel for the most part. Um, very respectable. Yeah. The videos that get more views, like the ones that reach more audience, like the Johnny Walkers or whatever, they the the comments <laughs> can get a little a little hasty. Although I don't think I made any mistakes in that video, so I come back at people just as hard. Like yeah. if I said something correct and you're saying it was wrong, and I just I'll just destroy you. Oh, it's I I love the comments I get like four years after the fact, like on some of the videos, that they're like, no, that's not true at all, like. It's this, or I don't know what it is. Like, I, I get it a lot, actually, on my, like, underrated, underpriced videos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they're comparing, like, the prices now to what I was saying back then when, like, things were, like, 20% yeah. cheaper. Yeah. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, it's right on par with, like... I know. That's, that's <laughs> like, one thing people come at me for. Like, this price is completely wrong. I'm like, well, prices vary in, yeah. in, in areas. And yeah. I'm pretty sure I say that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to. Like, we don't have a choice but to say, like... We live in probably the worst priced <laughs> whiskey area of all time. One of the worst in the world. Absolutely. I think uh, I think BC guys would like beg to differ, and mm -hmm. I think Australians Australia would, is pretty yeah, bad. Australians would beg to differ, but yeah. There's some funny examples on YouTube though of <laughs> of people making some. Well, I used to be that guy because I remember there's a great video that our good friend Swami Suave Mont <laughs> Montreal put out. It was like yeah. his fifth video ever. So it was like four years ago. He was doing the uh, Port Charlotte heavily peated. Um, and he says right in the video, uh, this one's borrowed at 50% ABV, so cast strength. <laughs> and I'm like, 50% ABV does not equal class strength. <laughs> but then he doubled down on the comments saying... He went hard. He said, he's just like, oh, it says it on the tin. I'm like, uh, I don't no, think so. No, it, it doesn't. Because <laughs> uh, Malton Montreal four years ago knew more than, than me, apparently. And apparently more than that tin. Or he, <laughs> he could see dead people's writing. Because <laughs> there is clearly no... I mean, you won't. I don't think you see it on many... Pretty much, Brook Laddie bottles almost all their like standard release at fifty percent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you're that's bringing it down anywhere between ten and you know and five and ten percent, mm -hmm. and this, that's rarely like I mean to get a fifty percent cast strength, you're looking at something that's probably a little bit older, right? Yeah. So love Brook Laddie for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's I mean that's a great ABV. I actually believe that most whiskeys should be bottled at that ABV, but not cast strength. Yeah, I love mean, you, Swami, but yeah, no, no, no not not cast strength. But. How about how about the time um, Mark from Whiskey Whistle was reviewing the Kilcarran twelve year old? Oh God, and he just freaking straight knocked it over and smashed it. Just butterfingers <laughs> like through his hands in like slow motion. No. <laughs> Cue video right here. <laughs> That was a funny, funny video, man. That yeah, awesome. see, like another, like it's not just the words that are flustered. Sometimes your your movements, your, it's your right? whole demeanor, man. Yeah. Like how many times have we just like smashed a glass by accident? Or, I think I broke a glass on camera, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. I was like, I broke. We were like a few whiskeys in that night, <laughs> but I broke a glass on on camera. Yeah, you get flustered, man. I mean, I guess everyone does it. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean whiskey videos, but there's other examples too. Like uh, even the big channels, like Whiskey Vault. 
they did their Woodford Reserve Double Oak, um, and they were talking about the bottle design, how it's changed to the more stubby bottles. And they were saying, like, oh, it's only this specific release this is stubby bottles. And someone's like, no, it's been like that for three years. <laughs> and it's just like, this channel is sinking. <laughs> You know, the keyboard warriors come out in I full love, force. It's so man. funny, man. I, I mean, I've gotten into my battles with some keyboard warriors over the years, but yeah. it, it's you gotta laugh sometimes. I know, like right? sometimes the shit that they say is it's like absolute. okay, but okay. The the model is not the same. It's, it's not just for this release. It's for all of them. Big deal. Yeah, I mean, I think for the whiskey tribe or whiskey vault in particular, they're. Um, they're not walking into many liquor stores these days. <laughs> they don't have to. I don't no, think. No, yeah. They, I, I'm pretty sure every single re, uh, review they do is like a bottle given to them, right? Yeah, they always cue those graphics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explosions some some and magnificent guns. bastard sends a bottle. They always get their and, name out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I equate that mistake to the fact that they're just not walking into enough liquor stores anymore because they don't have to. Uh, Scotch test dummies do a great job of uh, showing pe- or reading out comments of yeah. people just putting them on blast as well, yeah. and they—it's uh, always hilarious. So. It, you know what? It's it's funny, and but sometimes they can get under your skin, though. Like some of these, I mean, oh, yeah, they. So there's been times where I was like, I I cannot believe this guy's coming at me with this, like, and, and we've we've both been. Like guilty of like just engaging these guys. And oh my god! Going, going, <laughs> I'll screen cap stuff and throw it up on Instagram. On Instagram. Like, yeah, look yeah, at this exactly. idiot! Look yeah. at this story. Like send it, throw it up on the story, and yeah, have people chuckle along with you because <laughs> I mean, if not, I, there's nothing else we can do with keyboard warriors, right? Mm-hmm. But they do keep you in check, man. Like they, you want to like refine your shit so that you. You're not the guy that yeah. is constantly. You know what I after. keep saying a lot more is, in my opinion, because like I don't oh, want to yeah. like, just paint a broad. How quickly stroke did or you something. learn to do that? Yeah, very quickly. Right, like, like this or, is the in my best experience, whiskey. Really, is it the best whiskey? Because there's like you know what I mean. You're gonna yeah. get challenged on everything, so you have to you. It you go back to your like un- university days when you're writing an essay. Right. Yeah. And you're like you never want to actually be wrong. Yeah. So like. One could conclude, that <laughs> generally speaking, <laughs> because if you you say anything matter of fact, yeah, they're gonna be you cannot down be your matter throat. of fact when you're trying just saying your opinion. It yeah. has to be very yeah 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 for sure. You get the good ones though. You get like the guys that like uh, we our buddy Peter White. He, I've I've released a video that like you know I was I was editing when it was like late at night. I got two kids. Whatever. Like there's. The fact that I'm editing at all nowadays is impressive for me. (laughs) For me. I mean, maybe not for everybody else, but for me, it's impressive. So literally one of them, like sometimes I'll I'll film and then halfway through, I say something that's ridiculous and I'll be like, I'll just like blow up my cheeks or like do something like stupid. And Peter White messages me, he's like, you might want to edit that video because there's like a brain fart halfway through. (laughs) <laughs> something like that <laughs> i go back and i'm like, sure enough there's like a, a part that i completely forgot to edit out and i'm like thank god for peter white guaranteed i was editing that video one of my kids came up to me in that moment and said like something to me that distracted me i didn't i turned my head from the screen for one second <laughs> there you go it's there permanently <laughs> so thank god i still had the video on my phone so i could still edit it and then throw a new version up. oh like 90 percent of the stuff i say just hits the cutting room floor because it's just like cut it right <laughs> out a lot of times i'll go through and i'll be like you know do my tasty notes and i'll and i'll just start ranting about something like what am i talking about this isn't even relevant or about this whiskey and it's yeah. completely wrong so yeah restart yeah well i mean i've the the editing tool has been most useful for me now to just edit out facts that i didn't fact check before or (laughs) that i just like i knew and i said completely wrong like so i'll be like no i'm cutting that out (laughs) like it's just so i think you and i do a good job of not stating too many facts yeah in our videos like we we leave it all up to the whiskey we tell them what we're drinking sometimes i'll even read the abv wrong i'll be like yeah it's this is uh 67.4 like, meanwhile it's 58.4 i'm like looking right at it and i'll in the notes view what he meant was yeah. <laughs> because uh, you know i don't know something happens with that camera man like 
Yeah. You're either meant to be in front of a camera or maybe like it's going to take some practice. I think another good topic for this podcast will like just be us reading mean comments on YouTube. Yeah, we have to. We could go an hour just for that. That would be a great like what's happening on YouTube video. Yeah. And I think what we could do too is get like some of our buddies to send in like their like most egregious like Oh my comments. goodness. I think we we all have a story and I think everybody would I've like got this. so many. Yeah, so yeah. that that would be actually a really cool one. Kind of be like the what is it, uh, Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon? They Jimmy do- Kimmel does celebrities reading mean <laughs> tweets. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do that with our YouTube comments. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, let's get to scoring this bad boy, the Abalur Abuna Batch Fifty Nine. Uh, what are you thinking on this one? So, I added some water just to see if anything changed. I did notice the nose got sweeter. Maybe a touch floral. I've reviewed this one before, and I'll link to it. You can check it out. I think I gave it a high mark on my review. I'll probably give it a little bit less than I gave it then. Um, Not because it's bad, and not because there's anything off-putting to it. In fact, it doesn't have the thing I'm not liking in the Classic Cut, which I still like this Classic Cut, so I should say that, but... Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that this is probably an 86 for me. Yeah, so when I scored this one, I gave it 87, and I bumped it up one point for value at $100 Canadian. I think that's a good value whiskey, so I made it 88 out of 100, which is a recommend buy. Um, Yeah, I would stick with that mark. I reviewed this one back in 2018, Um, but yeah, I think it still holds up to that mark for sure. Yeah, I think my original mark on this was closer to a 90. Like it might've been like an 88, mm-hmm. 89. Um, we've had a lot of whiskey since we reviewed these. Like even you say 2018, like that's a long time ago. <laughs> like when you're talking whiskey journey, yeah, we've had some crazy yeah. good whiskey since then. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think my overall marking system has jumped back maybe three or four marks. You know what I mean? Overall. Yeah, I think that's kind of how it goes. Like, every time you drink more stuff, yeah. you know, you drink, like, really epic stuff, and you're like, wow, that, okay, well, that moves all these marks down, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would still like to try the Mortlock that we, you know, cherish. Again, um, for those of you that don't know, there's a Gordon McPhail Mortlock. I believe it was bottled in 1987. I'm not mistaken. It's 34 years old. 30, so then it, it could have been, yeah, 85, was, 86. Was, was it in 87? Could anyway. Have, anyway. It was um, an awesome whiskey, and we absolutely loved it. I would love to try it again just to see if anything's changed. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that this is an 86, borderline 87, uh, easy buy at 100 bucks. Yeah. Right? Like, the ABV alone... Um, Overall good stuff. Yeah. Now, we, let's just make sure our viewers are aware there's different batches, right? Every single batch Absolutely. is different. Some of them are great. Some of them are just okay. Yep. Um, I guess, again, we'll recommend Whiskey Base, largest database of all the batches. So you can check out the, re- the reviews there and kind of get a judge on more or less what people are saying are their favorite batches of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 59 is a good one. I think the one I reviewed is 57, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's 57. Good thing about having guys like Peter White watching our channel is, like, that guy's got either a photographic memory or, like, audiographic memory. I don't know what you (laughs) want to call that, but he will remember every single thing I've reviewed and the mark (laughs) I gave it, as well as yours, as well as, like, a bunch of other people right. and all these other stats and information so he's great to have yeah. as a support cast for sure <laughs> alright well thanks for joining us again on another Whiskey Rant podcast if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channels I'm Sipper Social Club Rob is Whiskey in the Six so search us out on YouTube subscribe watch us on there um, of course all the streaming services for the podcast Apple iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all the major ones, you can catch us there as well. Um, If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. You can review us on those Apple Podcasts as well. That always helps out. And until next time, uh, cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.